hi friends welcome back to my channel today's video is so so exciting because it's the first vlog of many of my mass verse reread so after house of flame and shadow came out i was in such a mood to just reread every single one of sarah's releases and i obviously decided to start with the throne of glass series so we'll chat about what this video is in a second but i really wanted to vlog my reread experience i've never like fully reread any of her series i have reread up until air of fire of like the throne of glass series but other than that i've only ever read her books once and i just like can't call myself a real fan if i haven't reread her books which like if you haven't and you love her like that's still so great but like in my head me personally i am not a fan until i have reread her books at least once so i just wanted to like experience it all and i wanted to pick up on little details and just i don't know flame and shadow just got me really really excited to experience her writing again and just be back in like worlds where i know and love the characters and just everything like that i'm so so excited for this little i guess series on my channel of just me rereading sarah j mass i hope you guys are as excited as i am but the way i'm breaking this whole journey this whole experience up is just into multiple parts lots of different vlogs coming your way over the next probably like the rest of this year because there's no way i'm reading all of those in like a month or something that that would be ridiculous but we are, of course, starting with one of my favorite series of all time, which is Throne of Glass. Like I said, I've reread up until Air of Fire, but I still wanted to, like, just restart because it's been a while and I just, I love, I love Throne of Glass, so why not? And because the series is so long, I've decided to break it up into multiple vlogs. This first one, I'm going to be reading The Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, and Crown of Midnight because these are like the three shortest books in the series. And I feel like you got to read them like together, pretty close together. They're like kickoff, like, you know, like they jumpstart the entirety of the series. So I thought it made sense to have them in their own um video by the way all of these vlogs will be filled with spoilers so if you haven't read like the entirety of the throne of glass series i would not watch this vlog because even though i'm only reading these three i'm talking about things that happen like later on in the series that i'm picking up on in the beginning books and so if you haven't read the entirety of the series it would spoil that if that makes sense so if you haven't read all of throne of glass i'm sorry but you probably can't watch this video unless you don't care about being spoiled. I don't go into like a lot of details, but I do mention a few things here and there. So yeah, and then I'm going to be putting Air Fire and Queen of Shadows into a vlog together and Empire Storms and Tower of Dawn, which I'll be doing my tandem read. Didn't do the tandem read the first time I read it, but I'm going to try it this time. So that will be in a vlog, and then Kingdom of Ash will have its separate video. So that's kind of how Throne of Glass will be broken up. I don't know how I'm going to do it for Akatar and Crescent City yet, but those are ways away, so I will, I will let y'all know. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the reading vlog of the first three books of Throne of Glass. Y'all, I am only 40 pages into Assassin's Blade, and I'm already obsessed with it again. I remember the first time I read this, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, love Selena, we stan her, of course, you gotta read this first, everything, right? And then on my first attempt of a reread, I was like, wow, I cannot believe people are reading this not first, like reading it after like Crown of Midnight or Air of Fire or some people just not reading it at all. Like, I don't understand. Makes absolutely no sense to me. 
This time, I'm 40 pages in and I'm already like emotionally connected with these characters. Like every time Sam's name pops up on the pages, I feel like I'm going to cry. Every time we are hearing about how Selena is wearing something beautiful and elegant and her feminine features are elevated, but she's also this badass assassin and she doesn't take shit from anyone and she's just so headstrong. Like we are seeing so many little moments of their interactions, of Selena's character development. Like I just can't, I seriously, like I try to understand the rationale of not reading this first and I simply cannot. Like there are so many little hints and discussions in this that travel all the way throughout the rest of the series and I'm just oh my gosh I am already having such a good time like I love this so much I I mean like I said I'm only 40 pages in because I just started it this morning but wow like seeing Selena's reaction to the slaves like just seeing how much of an emotional impact it has on her and Seeing that be the start of this book and then seeing like how she wants to save them from the slave mines and that being the beginning and like the initial grip of this first novella and then knowing how this ends that she's going to end up in Indovier and that's where she's going to have to be rescued by Dorian in Throne of Glass. Like I am just like that, that sandwiching just flawless. Like I... Oh, and it's also heartbreaking, right? Like seeing how Selena is so emotionally wrecked seeing these slaves and like doesn't even know how to like manage her emotions when she sees them and then knowing that she's going to end up one of them. It's just Sarah Janet has done something so incredible and I am so happy to be experiencing this all over again. Like I, I cannot explain to you guys how much fun I'm already having and I've literally just started this book like yeah so I I'm gonna keep reading I'm gonna try to not check in until like the halfway point because otherwise this vlog is going to be an eternity long plus like these are novellas that are a little bit shorter I feel like once we start getting into like um the actual full-length novels especially the latter half of the series when they're like pretty chunky i'll have a lot more check-ins and updates and thoughts and feelings but for this one i just wanted to do a quick like we've started the damn reread and i needed to share my thoughts Alright, I'm about 140 pages into this book now, which means I am just a little bit into the third novella of the five total that are in here, and I'm having such a good time. I love the Silent Assassins and the Mew Master story in this, and so I'm really excited to relive it again. And I, of course, really enjoyed the Assassin and the Healer because we got to see Irene, and I love Irene. And it was nice to see how she is in the very very beginning of the series and how her personality kind of grows and also seeing the little moments with Selena being more empathetic and just even though she's so like headstrong and she's so like in it for herself it's just so incredible to see her little moments of selflessness and just the origins of the the incredible queen that she is in these beginning ones. I mean, we saw her like free the slaves and that was an act of selflessness, how she couldn't endure what was going on with them. And so she, she took a stand and she did something about it. And then we have Irene and Selena wanting to help her and giving her the brooch and saying like, here's this money, like go train to be a healer. Like we need more of you in this world. And just those little sacrifices and those little moments of just humanity and selflessness are so crucial to Selena's character development and I love seeing them in this first installment of the series and I just I'm having so much fun so so much fun reliving this I, I yeah I just got back from the gym though so I'm pretty sweaty and 
I'm going to shower and then sit down and read more of the Assassin's Blade. I'm hoping to get over halfway through this book tonight and then hopefully finish it off either tomorrow or Friday. And then we can start Throne of Glass and then move into Crown of Midnight. Like, just look how stunning and gorgine these books are. Like, I am obsessed. I especially love the colors of Crown of Midnight. I don't know why. This just looks so cool to me. And I really like Throne of Glass too. I don't know. I, I really, really enjoy these new covers. I feel like I hated them when they first announced them, but now they've grown on me. I'm a fan and I can't wait to read the rest of the series, but we are off to a really, really good start. Obviously I knew Ansel's betrayal was coming, but tell me why it's still hitting. Like, I'm still reading this with my jaw on the floor. I'm like, oh my god, girl didn't just send her with a blank letter of approval with the signet and they're about to get attacked. Like, tell me why I'm still shook, even though I read this book two times before. Like, I knew it would happen, but at the same time, I'm like not prepared for it because I loved their friendship so much. I thought it was so sweet and I feel like this is the first time we are seeing Selena in a friendship setting and it's just so beautiful and wholesome and like of course like she's gonna get portrayed like I know that but oh gosh I'm on um chapter 11 I'm on page 209 and I'm gonna try to finish this novella before I go to sleep tonight I'm really tired it's only 9 40 I have like 20 pages left so I'm gonna read this and then head to bed but Ansel my girl why do you do that why'd you do her dirty like that Ugh, the betrayal the last line of this third novella is or i guess the last two lines it says for the first time in a long while she heard the song of a northern wind calling her home and she was not afraid and i'm just thinking about how she's gonna say my name is selena sardothian and i am not afraid and i just got so emotional like, I reread that line, like, four times. I, oh my gosh. I'm officially on The Assassin and the Underworld, which I'm not prepared for. So I'm going to stop reading for tonight because I just, I feel so emotionally, like, drained from this book because it's just so, it packs a punch, okay? It's short, but it packs a punch. I am, like, just over halfway through. <sighs> I just can't believe it. The and she was not afraid. Oh. Okay. Is Selena dancing with Dorian here? And then Kale steps in because it says that um the guy who's she's dancing with has blue eyes and is like nobility and all of that. And and here it says that the stranger's friend was behind him in an instant, his bronze eyes bronze eyes fixed on Sam. And Kale has bronze eyes. So now I'm like, did she just meet Dorian and Kale in the novellas? I'm, I'm shook. I'm literally shook. Like, what is going on? Sarah J. Mass. Literally such a genius. Like, I really, I really think that's what's going on. Maybe I'm stupid for not figuring this out earlier, but this is Dorian and Kale, right? Like, I'm not dumb. Like, am I making stuff up? I don't know. All right, I just finished The Assassin's Blade and that just broke my heart. Like I knew everything that was gonna happen was going to happen, you know, but it's still so heartbreaking. I mean, reading Sam's death is so painful and just like it, visualizing her 
getting up on that table and just hugging him while he's cut and bruised and broken was just so, oh God, it's just, oh my gosh, there's so many emotions that went through my body when that, when I was reading that scene again and it was brutal. Like it was just so hard to get through. It just packs such a punch. And even though I knew a Robin was the one who like betrayed them, when I read that, I was like, oh, that bitch. Like, I hate him so much. He is literally the worst, like, character ever, but, like, also a really good character because you hate him so much, and he just infuriates me. And so when I reread the scene of him um, talking to Ferran, I think that's how you say it, and he was like, I don't like to share my belongings. I was like, I'm going to gut you. Like, I... Oh my gosh, he just, oh, he makes me so, so mad. The very, very ending, like the last chapter that's called Beginning, where we see her say, my name is Selena Sardothian and I will not be afraid. Oh my God, tears were shed again. Like again, I knew it was coming, right? Like I think I even talked about it earlier about how I was not mentally prepared for when she would start using that phrase, but it's still, ooh, it's still hit home. And this book is just so, so incredible. What a great like start to the series. Typically, I don't love novellas, but these are just so well written and I love the way that they just like follow one timeline even though they're different novellas and I just I can't wait to like interact with some of these characters again later on in the series and I'm just I'm so so happy so I, I finished this I'm gonna take a little bit of a break just for my mental health like literally just a few hours not a lot and then we're gonna start Throne of Glass and I'm so excited. I'm only two chapters into Throne of Glass. I'm literally on page 14. But now I'm confused as to whether or not my theory was actually correct that the man that she danced with in Assassin's Blade was Dorian and his like guard was Kale because they don't recognize each other at all. And granted, at that party, everybody was super drunk and like I'm sure they just don't remember. But I would have thought that maybe SJM would have at least put like a phrase of like a familiar look in his eyes or something like that, you know, to show that that was a callback to Assassin's Blade. So now I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my theory was wrong. Maybe I'm just dumb. I don't, let me know if you know down below if that was actually them. But yeah, I obviously clearly not far into it at all, but I was just that because they had just interacted and there was no recognition in their dialogue or anything like that so I was a little confused but yeah they're about to tell her the proposition of how Dorian wants her to come compete and everything so I'm excited for that. I also realized like now literally just now that I have a sticker that is I'm trying to find it in my little pile of stickers. I have one that's exactly this cover and I didn't put it in this book so now I want to figure out a place to put it because I like I have these and I want to save room for when I annotate eventually and so I didn't want to use up that page but now I don't know where to put it like should I put it where it actually says throne of glass and maybe but like there's nowhere to do it without covering something I'm pretty sad about this because I just like totally missed the fact that I had a sticker that was literally the cover so maybe I'll put it like, I don't know, it looks silly if I just put it at chapter one, you know? But I want to use it in this because it matches so well. And it doesn't fit like here anywhere because again, I would have to cover this part and I want to use it for when I eventually reread again and annotate. Maybe I'll just put it here. That looks dumb. I don't know, but we'll figure out a way. This is a very long clip, basically just to say that I started the book. So I'm going to go and hopefully next time we check in, I will have read 
more. I have a lot to do tonight, but I'm hoping to at least get 50 pages into this before going to sleep. That'll make me very happy. I also, I'm channeling my inner Lachlan, and I just keep smelling these books, and I can see now why she does it, because they smell so good. I forgot how much I loved Selena and Dorian in this first one like their banter and them like teasing each other and just the flirtation I'm like yes I'm here for it especially when she shows up at the like mask ball and he's like let's dance I'm like yes let's like I oh my gosh I love their dynamic so so much and of course Kale's like jealous because it's Kale and it's just I'm having such a good time I also really appreciate like how Kale and Dorian like obviously both are mesmerized by Selena but the way they look at her and the way that they describe her is so different and it's just interesting like seeing both their perspectives in describing Selena I don't know I just thought that was fascinating I hadn't noticed it like the first time around that it's it's very different but I'm really 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 enjoying this I'm on page 295 so I only have 100 pages left before I finish this one and I'm just I'm so glad I decided to reread the series like I'm just having so much fun so that is my little third of glass update and I will talk to you guys when something more of note happens I mean we had the whole like Nehemia is hiding something situation um, in the library because she heard her speak like fluently um, and then we're also getting more about like word marks and the word gates and all of that stuff and just seeing like the magic system being introduced or not the mag magic system necessarily but just like magic in general being introduced in this first one because we know it's been outlawed like throughout the country and seeing Selena uncover that maybe it is not all gone and it has not all disappeared is just so much fun and yeah there was also one part where Selena was reading like a smutty book and Dorian picked it up and started reading it and he was like oh my gosh is this what you read and I was sitting there laughing because we all know Sarah J Mass, okay and like she could she could write smut so I just think it's so funny that she made her main character like also read smut I just think that's so cute so that's my little update and now I will chat with you guys when something more of note happens guys I finished throwing up glass and of course I loved it I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars I I don't really change my ratings for like on rereads usually so it's been 4.5 stars all three times that I've read this book but I just had such a good time I mean the whole like final duel with Kane always gets me so like anxious because even though I know what's gonna happen I'm still like oh my gosh Caltain like poisoned her and now she's going to like have hallucinations but they're not actually hallucinations and Nehemia is gonna come through save the day open the portals to the in-between and I just ooh, it was so good and I there was actually a line in here like relatively near the end um it was like at the end of one of the chapters where she was finally talking to Elena and I don't know how I didn't notice this before but Selena goes, thank you for saving my life. Elena bowed her head. Blood ties can't be broken, she whispered and then vanished, her words echoing in the silent tomb. How did I not notice that she said that literally in this first book? Like, we have basically been told all this information from the get-go. And if you're like smart enough to piece it together, you'd figure it out before anything happens later on in the series. And I just thought that that was really cool. But I'm definitely not smart enough to figure it out before the rest of the series. So I, I didn't notice it the first time I read it. But that was pretty cool to see that. And um, I, I don't like Kale. But in this first book, I do like him being this like quiet, like to himself 
it's going to take a lot from Selena to get him to open up. But I think that their dynamic in like the first couple of books is really, really sweet. And I really appreciate it. But of course, I don't like Kale overall. But we'll get to that when we read the later books in the series. So that is where I'm at. So I'm now going to be moving on to the last book that's going to be in this part of the vlog. And that is Crown of Midnight, of course, um, the second book. But I'm so excited for this one because I... I just love the ending of this one. It's just so, like, it really packs a punch, and I'm really excited to read the build-up all the way to it. And I will update you guys once I've made a little bit of progress in Crown of Midnight. I'm only like 55 pages into Crown of Midnight and it's just reminding me of how much you need to read Assassin's Blade first. Like it just makes so much more sense because I just wrote a page that spoils the entirety of the ending of the Assassin's of the Assassin's Blade. Like literally talks about Sam's death. It talks about how Sam had gone on a mission to take down Farron, Farron, I don't know how to say his name. And that's how he died and someone betrayed like what would be the point of reading the ending of The Assassin's Blade if you already knew every single thing that was going to happen? Like, as soon as Sam and Selena, like, split off from a Robin, you would know that they were going to go on a mission to kill this guy, and then Sam's going to go alone, and he's going to get killed because somebody betrays them. Like, then why even read that? Like, I just, I, I just can't comprehend why on this planet anyone would want to read The Assassin's Blade after this book or after air of fire or not at all which is like the most psychotic of all psychotic behaviors but still like i simply i simply don't understand but that was my little tangent i'm gonna keep reading this book because i'm like already into it like really invested and it's only been like 55 pages so i'm gonna go but i just wanted to i just want to give that little little tangent for a moment All right, I'm about to go to sleep, but I just got to chapter 24. And chapter 23 is the um, scene with Selena and Kale doing it. And um, ugh, I just, I'm sorry, I like despise Kale and just their entire romance. And so reading this again, I was like, ugh, ugh, nope. When she was like, oh, his kiss was like coming home. I was like, no absolutely not please can we not do this again so i'm just i'm just waiting till air of fire honestly like i can't with this romance i really can't like it's it's i would okay okay i wouldn't say it's really really well done to be honest like i wish we had gotten more page time with selena and kale like actually falling in love but like it's not bad you know like objectively but just like my emotions that I have against Kale, seeing there, I just, I can't do it. I really can't do it. It's giving me so much pain. I literally had to put the book down and I was like, I'm just going to go to sleep. Like I could stay up hypothetically for a little bit longer and read a little bit more of this, but I don't want to. I really don't want to. <laughs> I like, I like need a break after that scene. So yeah, I am on page 192 though. So I read like almost 200 pages today in pretty much one sitting. I don't know why. I just, this book is reading really fast and it's pretty good. So yeah, that's all. And I'm sorry that this was like such a delayed check-in. I think the last time I checked in with you guys, I was on page like 50. But again, I just sat down and read a bunch of this book tonight. So I didn't really have a chance to update until now. But I'll try to be better about the second half of the book. I am just, I'm very, very excited to get to some reveals. And yeah, I'm going to go and I will talk to you guys later. I've been so bad about updates with Crown of Midnight. Like I'm literally almost done. I think I have 70 pages left and I remember that I was vlogging and that I needed to tell you guys my thoughts so far. So I think last time we chatted, I had stopped around the halfway point of the book and Kale and Selena had just, you know, boinked. 
can't believe I just said that word on the internet. Um, so obviously a lot has gone down. Nikemia's death hit me so hard this time around. I don't know why. The first few times, I don't remember. Like, I think obviously the first time the shock of it, like, hit me. But I wasn't as, like, moved by the emotions. I think reading these books, like, back to back, I'm just constantly thinking about Selena's struggles in Assassin's Blade with like finding friends and female friendships and all of those bonds and not really having people in her life who like care about her and so I think because of the proximity of those two books it hit me a lot harder and I think that speaks a lot to like binging series and actually remembering things and like you know really staying attached and like being with the characters. My coffee brewer is really interrupting my vlog right now um but just like being with the characters like back to back and it just it really hit me I don't know why but yeah and of course Kale literally hate him like I know that like the real hatred <laughs> comes from like the later books honestly I don't even remember like which book really shifted my view on Kale but I I do remember when I was rereading this I was like oh okay I can remember now why I Never loved Kale. Like, he was fine. I was never a Kale stan. I don't know why. I know a lot of people, like, when they're reading the first couple of books when Kale hasn't, like, sucked yet, they're like, oh my god, I love Kale. Like, he's great. I love him and Selena. Like, blah, blah, blah. But I just, I don't know. Something about him always fell off to me. <laughs> and this book is, like, showing me why. He's just so freaking loyal to the crown at this point. And I'm just, I'm like, Bestie, you literally talked about wanting to marry her and then didn't tell her that the king wanted to question Nehemia. Like, what's wrong with you? So that was really annoying. And I think it also made me a little, like, upset when Selena's will, like, she was giving everything to Kale. And I was like, girly pop, you literally just met him. You haven't known him for that long. Like, I know, like, in love or whatever, but I was like, everything? Everything you own is going to him? Like, I don't know. That's, like, really random, but that is something I remember. And then... The whole like yellow legs, witch cran, witch cran, witch clan stuff. I I remembered a lot of what happened with Bobby Yellow Legs. Um, so that part I was kind of like, okay, like I, I know what's going on. But I forgot how much of an introduction we get to the Croken, Croken, Croken witches in this one. Like, because obviously we are going to meet certain characters in later books like literally in the next book that are my favorite character fun fact but i forgot that we were getting introductions to that in this in so much detail like about all of the witches and the history and all that so that was really interesting to learn about oh oh my god i just saw the word word and i remembered we haven't talked about the word keys so selena finally has discovered that there are three word keys which like if you've read the whole series you know that's like the main plot line like the word keys is like the main thing in the series and i was i couldn't remember like at what i knew it was in this book but i couldn't remember at what point it was in this book and so when i got to it i was like oh my god the riddle like as soon as she read the riddle with like talking about three items i was like the word keys i was i got very very excited but she finally figured out that she finally figured out that they were keys and so girly pop is on a mission now and i love it and of course kale is trying to uncover who the hell selena really is because he's like she was singing this old fey song to mark nahimi's death that's only known by the terrasin nobility like who is this girl and i mean i know who this girl is you know who this girl is but kale don't know who this girl is and so it's fun to see him trying to figure out what's going on and like who she is and also there have been times when they have mentioned like oh selena's gonna go look for like she has to figure out or like ally with the terrasin rebel group and find aelin galathinius and rise and blah 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 and like just the phrasing of the sentences i'm like how did i not figure out that it was her how did I not put two and two together? Because it just makes it not like obvious in the sense of like, obviously like the first time you're reading it, you're not going to figure it out. But like in hindsight, I'm like, she makes it pretty clear. Like that is what is going on. That she is the lost princess. Like, because why else would we be mentioning 
Aileen Galanthinius like 27 times in this book and why else would we have figured out that she was like she's nobility she sang the fey ancient song all of this stuff and then all of a sudden we're saying we need to find Aileen like it just like makes sense like rereading it I'm like yeah of course it's like so I don't know let me know if you guys guessed that that was what was going on the first time you read this series because I definitely didn't and now that I'm like reading it I'm like how did I not get that so those are my updates I'm gonna sit down and finish the last 70 pages I'm so so excited for Kale to find out even though I don't like him but it's gonna be cool I just that reveal always like gives me chills I don't know why so I'm gonna read and then I will update you guys once this book is finished Welcome to the end of the vlog because I have finished Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass and oh my god do I love the freaking ending of this book. I mean when Kale finds out what he's done that he's literally sent Selena or <laughs> Aelin to like her biggest potential ally and like their enemy and he just realizes like how much he's messed up. I just always find it so funny to read that like the last line of like I had just sent her to blah 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 or Kayla just sent her to um like Queen Maeve. Kale sank to his knees. Like I just I just think it's so freaking funny. Um so yeah I just oh my gosh I I love love the ending of this book and like I'm so excited to jump into Air of Fire because I obviously like already know what's gonna happen but there are so many details that I don't remember an air of fire and i remember that one being a lot of like aelin or selena's journey and just really coming to terms with who she is a lot of character development and growth happens in air of fire which is actually like right there and i'm so so excited because this one sets it up like perfectly i also really like how selena like reveals to kale who she is like she's like i'm not gonna make it easy for you i'm gonna make you work for it and i absolutely love that like her whispering like the date or whatever in his ear i just thought that was so so funny i also really appreciate that even though selena's like okay kale you messed up like you did me dirty all of this stuff and i like i can't believe you wouldn't tell me about um like the king's plans to torture my friend all of this stuff like even when she does come to like forgive him and like let him apologize for it and like kind of fix what was broken she doesn't like go back to him which I I just really really appreciate that that she's like I can't trust you anymore like all may be forgiven but all is not forgotten and I I just I really appreciate that I think it's like a really pivotal moment in Selena's like character arc of just like who she's able to trust and it just it goes towards like a lot of her history of like people betraying her and things like that and I just I I like that she's able to like forgive him and try to like mend that relationship in terms of just like being friends or like caring about each other but she's like I'm not going going back to you which I really I really appreciate so yeah I'm excited to see more of like Dorian discovering his magic and Kale's like dude you have magic like it's just oh my gosh I love this series so freaking much I actually just filmed the intro <laughs> to this vlog that you guys saw in the intro and I'm just I can't wait to read Air of Fire but with that that is the end of the first Throne of Glass vlog in a series of a few vlogs and I hope you guys enjoyed it if you made it to the end of this video leave a sword emoji because like assassins duh and with that I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows reading vlog I will see you guys in my next video very soon bye